Hi, my name is Sam, and in this video, we're going to go over an intro to Viso 2D and how to use the Image Stack Processing Workroom. So to start out, let's open some data. So we're going to go to File, Open Data, and we're going to go to Tutorials, A2D, Powder, and Powder 10 Micron, like so, and click Open. So next, we're going to set the resolution to the scale bar of the image, like so, or like so, and then we're going to set the scale bar length to 10 microns because that's what it says right here. Awesome. There we go. And next, we're going to crop this. So we're going to set this to 70 pixels. And this is a good crop of the image because we just don't want this bottom part in it. And we're just going to click Finish. So now that we've loaded the data in, we're going to create an image stack processing workflow. So to do that, we're going to click Create Workflow, like so. And perfect. So the image stack processing workroom allows you to build workflows for processing your data. It is a flexible and dynamic environment that allows you to iterate quickly and easily. It also provides continuous feedback on each step that you add. So the goal of this video is we're going to, is we want to segment out each of these powder balls separately. So to start out, let's create a Gaussian image filter. So we just want to go to the search string and search for Gaussian filter like so and click enter. Then we're going to change the kernel type to recursive and set the standard deviation to three. So the goal of the Gaussian filter is just to smooth the image. So if we zoom in, we can see that on the left side, which is the step input to the Gaussian filter, it's a lot more rough. And on the step output, the right side, it's a lot smoother. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a hysteresis thresholding and we want to set the low threshold to 20 and the high threshold to 50, like so. And what this does is it allows, is it segments out each of the powder particles. But there are some problems with this. We can see that some of the particles are connected. So to fix this, we're going to create a mask of the edges of each particle. So to do that, we're going to insert a reference change step. And basically this, what this allows us to do is instead of going in a linear progression, we can step back to a previous step. So in this case, we're going to step back to the Gaussian filter and use it as the input to the next step. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to use a structure enhancement filter. And we're going to change the standard deviation to one. And we're going to change the contrast to dark. So what this does is, as you can see, it's now created outlines of each of the powder particles. So the next thing we want to do is we want to segment these outlines out. So to do this, we're going to use a top hat filter like so. And we're going to keep the kernel size at three, but we're going to change the intensity range from 0 0.01 to one. So as you can see, the step output is the outlines of each of the particles. And then there's some little noise in the middle, but we can fix that. So now that we have that, we're going to use another reference change step to go back to the hysteresis thresholding, like so. Next, we're going to create an arithmetic module. So this allows us to combine two images together. So in our case, we want to take the hysteresis thresholding output and subtract from it the top hat output. So to do that, we're going to select input B to be the top hat. And we've already set input A to be the hysteresis thresholding. And we're going to just do A minus B. And let's see what happens. Now you can see each particle is separated from its neighbors, but there are also these little bits of noise that are not filled in in each of the particles. So to fill those in, we can just use the fill holes method. So we're just going to click fill holes, like so. And we want to change this to four connectivity. All right, so this is looking pretty darn good. Next, we're going to label each particle. So to do this, we're going to use the labeling module, like so, click enter, and there we go. So this labels each particle as a different object. So there's still some small problems, like right here, there's some really small particles that we don't want to include. So to get rid of these, we're just going to use our move small spots module. And we're going to set the size to 100, and let's see how that works. So we can see now that all the small spots are have been removed and it looks pretty good. 
one reason we wanted to label each of these particles individually is so we can create statistics trying to describe the particles as a whole. So these statistics would not be accurate if we include the particles on the border that are only partially in the image. So to try to eliminate those, we're going to use this filter by measure range module like so. And we're going to use instead of the Instead of this measure, we're going to change this to shape AP. We're going to set this for, to 0.92 to 1.2, like so. So what this does is it eliminates all the particles that are not circular enough. And you can choose a different measure to filter it different ways, but that's what shape AP does. So next, we can use the label blending tool to make sure our final result is still representative of the original image. If we move the label blending tool more towards the right, we can see that the our thresholding becomes less, becomes more transparent. So this looks pretty representative of the particles in the image, and that's great. So now that we've done that, we're gonna save the workflow, click save. We're gonna save it as recipe, click save, and we're gonna click close. Uh, then, so to apply the workflow, all we need to do is click apply. And there we go. So it applied it. So just for some better visualization, let's change the color map to labels 256. So this allows us to very clearly see that each particle is a separate label. So now that we have these individual labels, let's create a histogram of all the particles equivalent diameters. So to do that, we're going to use the label analysis module. So we're just going to keep the measures the same and we're going to click apply. So one thing to note is now you can see we've calculated all these statistics for all the different particles in this image. So to create the histogram, we're going to go to window histogram, and then we're going to click source as this 10 micron dot measure. And we're going to select EQ diameter or equivalent diameter as our input. And we're just going to click plus and there we go. So it automatically created a histogram for us and you can change the color here and you can change whether it's filled or not and all of that stuff very easily. All right, so that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.